bitch, just like bitches that have right. babies at 23 and they're like, milk. No, bitch, you're just a you're bitch just with a baby. You're just a bitch with a baby. Shut the fuck up. One, let's get it. So, we're talking goats, guys. Like, mm. what do you guys consider as the goat? Well, I think we're like, going to have to Like, goats that climb rock mountains? Mountain goats. Mountain goats. Top of the tops. Mm. Mm -hmm. All day. So, so we doing that, the rap devil thing? <laughs> no. Maybe if it's coming from like MGK or oh, some shit, right. you know Goats, what I mean? Because uh, you know I don't really uh, fuck with Eminem. What makes the greatest of all time? I think we'd have to have it. Well, because it's all it's all biased. Because all of our goats are all going to be different. But yes. no, let's, let's. So it goes on different categories on yeah. what we would. I mean, you guys agree to, or disagree? What makes a goat is the impact. Because a goat has to be on that level. Yeah. The impact that they had to the masses. Not just subjectively, oh, his flow's better, or what he's saying is better. As a whole, I, yeah. the impact I that think they it had. pushes above and beyond just being... Just the impact. Just being in the studio. Because look at I mean, but that's 50-50 that's, that's also, because, really? I mean, yeah, look at Biggie. He, he doesn't got a big body of work, but his also his impact was insane. Well, that's what I'm saying. But... Yeah. So it's okay. Well, I, but I see Biggie's, what you're saying. Biggie's not I one of my goats. So. He's not my goat at all. So I'll bump. I will but never that's say what it. I was going off of. What you say, impact? Because okay. to me, that is Biggie has one of the biggest impacts in the hip hop. And world. that's my thing. Like Biggie's not my favorite, but see, I that's still what I'm saying. But I still understand the impact. He was still like impacted me. Right. Like he still did, even though Biggie's. I can name. Okay. Like, well, you're last, like, so we'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah. 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 For, for sure. For sure. For sure. My list. I would have I'll to be like, say, fucking okay, you have to give us, you have to give us what, how you graded, how you know, I how grade you gave us your goats. <clears throat> I grade them as their, their impact on the, on the scene, you know, as a hip hop community all together, their versatility, um, meaning, uh, lyrically, um, their, their styles, you know, the ability to jump from being something grimy, as Rick would put it, into something more heartfelt or, you know, on the conscious side. They're not the same thing all the time. They're not the same thing all the time. Um, their ability to move above and beyond out of music into different medias and different mediums and become uh, uh, Activists, public, public figures and, yeah, public figures in other domains. Mm. So I would have to say, fuck, man, you got me on that one. Shit. Fuck you, Duke. Well, first, of, <laughs> first and foremost, I'm going to have to say uh, Ice Cube. Ice Cube was part of the, one of the biggest hip-hop groups of all time. And groups are my deal. If you if you don't know me at all, groups are my thing, be it the Temptations all said. the way up to Wu-Tang. <laughs> You're fucking me hard. Group, right now. Groups that's are what she said the, big, well. the big and the baddest, you know, that's it. So, so Ice Cube was able to not only be a part of the biggest rap group, he wrote a lot of their music for Dr. For Dr. J. 90%. For Easy e Yeah, 90%. And he was 17. Yeah. One of the youngest guys in the group. Jerry curled out um, looking like Reese, dog gang gang. And so from that, from that, he moved on to Lynch Mob, started his own solo career. And from that, started in, uh, Boys in the Hood, wrote Friday... Started Cube Vision, and now he's one of the one of the biggest comedic actors that we know. Yeah, ain't lying. He he is a household name. Ice Cube is right there for everybody from for our kids. For he he started out making fuck the police, and now he's making kids movies. Let, if I <laughs> can interject real quick, I hate to suck a dude's dick, especially on camera. But like towards the last shit of what you said reminds me of O'Shea. Like that's what you gun for, and not not only is that what you gun for, but that's already your reality. You have people that you know their kids calling you Uncle Ocean. You ain't their fucking uncle, right? right. You got a you got kids out here that are not your family saying let's let's bump Oche. Hashtag bump Oche. You know what I mean? Oh, like man. we are in Casper fucking Wyoming, which is not a popping place, but that is their objective is to get this place popping, which they've been very successful at. Very fucking successful. So, yeah, I just had to, like... That's exactly what that shit no, just reminded me of. Right? You know what I mean? Like, um, well, and usually when so he... From Cube, yeah. from Cube we'll, move, we'll move right into Tupac. Mm -hmm. We'll move right into Tupac. His body of work starting out... Starting out as a poet, being in an art academy, 
growing and being a part of Digital Underground with uh, uh, Shock G, mm -hmm. being in a movie with Digital Underground um, with Dan Aykroyd, Dan Aykroyd and yeah. Chevy Chase and yeah, all those guys. Uh, I can't, I can't remember. Like Bruce Willis's wife, what's her name? Holly, uh, Demi Moore. Demi Moore. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the movie, but but it's a movie. Uh, <laughs> from going from that, starring in movies with Janet Jackson. Um, being part of Jews. We watched that the other day, didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, Poetic Justice? Yeah. We sure did. Poetic Justice, Juice. Um, having his own documentaries after his passing. Being a part of the biggest rap beef that anybody has ever known. Having albums has come out 15 years after yes, he was dead. Yes. Again, people know of Tupac still. You can't talk about Tupac without talking show. about Biggie, but Tupac had that star power and I would have loved to see what would have happened if that unfortunate event in Las Vegas never would have happened. I would think that Tupac would have been right up there with Ice Cube. They would probably be working hand in hand writing movies together if not Tupac Tup starring in a Cube Vision movie. You know, boom. I would have killed 15 newborn white babies to dap up with Tupac. Oh, <laughs> and no, then, for real, because everything you're like straight up the shit I think about you pretty much not said it all, but you said all the shit about Pac. Well, let's like that dude was fucking so ahead of his. Let, life. Let's take it to the East Coast a little bit. Jay Z is on one of my goat lists. Mm -hmm. That's Be what we're on. No, nope. because that's not what we're on. We're on the goat list. We're on good yeah. shit though. Okay. Yeah. Jay Z. Jay Z took being signed to. You hate my. He, he took, I'm gonna, he, I know I'm. He gonna. took being signed to Def Jam. Yeah. Started his own label. Yeah. Not only that, he worked with. He worked with Biggie in the studio. He's yeah. one of. He's one of the only guys on the East Coast that he could stole say, some he shit was from part Biggie of, too. He was part of Biggie's squad. Uh -huh. Biggie was writing his lyrics. I don't care what anybody says. There's. Proof that Biggie was writing his lyrics down until he met Jay Z, a guy that could go into the studio with it all in his mind. And not only that, he built an empire on top of that. And Jay Z is one of the biggest names in the hip hop industry. Rockefeller, The Rock, everybody knows what that is. That's what puts him on the goat list right now. He's he's a household name. He's married to Beyonce, who's really a household name. And he's for real for real. he's ugly. And he married Beyonce. He's, he's, he looks like a sucker fish. Hope you don't see this. If you do, I don't give a fuck. You look like a sucker fish, bro. Grow a mustache. Go back to SeaWorld. Deal. But, but you, he, he took, he started from, he started from a, from the bottom working as now he's here. a roadie with one of the greatest of the East Coast. And again, I bet if, Biggie was around, he'd be on my goat list right now, but Jay Z's right there, you know. Um, that puts me at three. Number four again, Red Man and Method Man. Mm. In every stoner circle I've ever been in, that's ever been blowing blunts since we were kids, you always know who Red and Meth are, and you've always watched How High. Yeah, I don't care who you are, if you, if if you. Are just in the circle. You know who Red and Meth. I feel like you know you know who Red and Meth are. I for our generation equivalent to Cheech, Cheech and Chong. I'm older cat. I don't, yeah. I'm older cat. I I was already felling when How High came out. Dog, and, I'm and 91 Red and, though. I'm fucking a '90s baby, and I was a Cheech and Chong cat way before. Cheech and Chong when I saw How and High, I was young as fuck, but I was still like a judging it, like judging it <laughs> to uh, uh, Cheech and Chong. Like, I better fucking come correct. Bicycle. You know what I mean? So got like, me every time when that dude started chat. That's my bike. He yeah. says. <laughs> <laughs> so that puts them on the on the number four spot for me. There, how again another household name. Yeah, Redman isn't part of Wu Tang. He's a Wu Tang affiliate. He's honorary Wu Tang. Like oh, just honorary, like I'm honorary Wu Tang. Dog. Dog. For real, same we, shit, you got, same you, shit. You got the you got the ghost of Red and Meth right here mm -hmm. all day. Yeah. Um, so that's what puts them at the number four spot for me. They just they're sick with it. They're lyrical as fuck. They've had their own movies, their own TV shows. Every single album that they've ever put out has been hot. Bet the man could hop on a radio station right now and do a sixteen and it blow up like that just because he's he's fire. He's fire. 
Red Man, mm-hmm. I watch Red Man's interviews and just blow oh, Red Man, I, I, love, I, love, that. I you know love this. I think why I love Red Man so much is because of exactly what you said. He reminds me of me a lot. He could do fucking a notorious TV show, MTV Cribs, in his scummy, real, bummy ass apartment. Real That's apartment. his real place of residence. Yeah, with the donor box and everything. It. I'm used to being homeless a lot, living in and out of vehicles in the streets. If I got the opportune, like, you, you'll be MTV showing up Chris, inside come of check car. out my trailblazer that's about to finish me repo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's some real shit. Like, Red Man is the epitome of real, when it, like, in my definition. Like, you look at it in the dictionary, right? he's like, hey, fuck, <laughs> fuck with it. Yeah. I love him. For real, my number real. one spot, this is going to be cliche as fuck. I'm sure everybody's going to agree with it. I'm sure it's a lot of people's goat. I'm sure it's just not everybody's most popular opinion. It's Slim Shady. I fucking knew it's it. It's Slim Shady. It's because of the fucking E on your head. <laughs> I'm in I'm in I get it. I no, uh, get it. Slim Shady LP was the first CD I ever owned that was mine. I don't get it. Um, he took it from being that corny little white dude, right? And he's, he's a corny old white dude now, Still. but he, he's grown as an artist. He could do songs like, just don't give a fuck with Royce of Five. And I hated still, the stupid leprechaun voice, though. But still do a song. That was horrible. Still do a song like Mockingbird you mean about his, his daughter. His voice in general? No, the. So that's another thing. Was voice. it Relapse or. Uh, uh, My mom, uh, mom, uh, recovery. Mom. That, that. Recovery, right? How, yeah, how different that is that from yeah. Wallace? No, it's dark. Very, it's so, so different. With yeah, I couldn't do it. You got to think about the backstory. The only fucking reason I hate the only two reasons I hate on Eminem is one because of his voice like I said earlier in the beginning of this podcast was we're listening to you yeah I fucking hate Eminem's voice I can I cannot vibe to M's voice number two is he's and this is not any hate on Juggalos because I got a lot of old school Juggalo homies that was really about the Juggalo life not just running around town fucking people over and being fucking retards he was too, it, it didn't have substance. 3 a.m. in the morning, put my key in the door and body that, laying that's, all over the that's floor. A re- and, that's a real. So he has a lot, no, talking, but that's a lot throughout his whole career, though. The the shit that sounds witty and clever, but it has no meaning, no one can relate to it. But when and that's said, just me. A lot of cats would be like, well, this shit flow good. When he, when Mine he is said, like, that shit don't I felt like right. his first three albums were pretty fucking the good. Slim his, first, LP. his first two for me was, my, my fuck. For my sure. epitome of like, like lyricism on a song, like one of my favorite songs is when him and Royce of Five Nine done Bad Meets Evil on the Slim Shady LP, and he came out saying, "I don't speak, I float in the world, trapped in a sheet." You know, mm-hmm. it's like I don't speak, I float in the air, trapped in a sheet. Uh, I'm, I know, I know oh, exactly fuck. what I'm, you're I'm a ghost. About, I'm a ghost wrapped in a beat. I translate when my voice is read through a seismograph and the noise is spread to translate through Royce's head. Which is hella fucking... Clever! So, like, it blew my mind. Like, that's one of my favorite songs in the in the Eminem Peep game, homie. So, Osh made a fucking meme out of me for this. So, that exact bar you're talking about is what gave me inspiration for this real simple bar of mine. The only time... Uh, what was it? Only reason you rap is so that you can sound good. The only time I open my trap is so I can be be understood. understood. Mm -hmm. That was like the inspiration, the key inspiration between me doing that. Was like, oh my God, I heard that and I was like, that really is me. The only time I rap is about my life experiences and what motivates me and what I love. That's the only shit I rap about. I don't rap, rap about no fuckery, no false hope. I don't sell you false hope. I don't sell you false dope. That shit's amphetamine. It's going through your nose to your brain. You're getting fucking geeked off of it. Or you're fucking nodding off of it because you've been geeked off of it for so long. You know what I mean? Right. Like that, I know, bro, that was like the exact bar. That's, that's right? wild shit, Dookie. And then, that was my exact sh- like uh, inspiration between those two little simple bars. And I did that shit on a contest for Fuckboy Futuristic. Fuck you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Which I was fucking, I was on one at the time and I was fucking out of control in life. So I, me as an artist didn't really fucking... Do what I had to do to fucking get shit, make shit one, happen. But speaking of speaking of that, that same, tight, speaking of that same song with Royce of Five Nine, when Roy said, "Whipping human ass, throwing blows, cracking jaws with my fist wrapped in gauze, dipped in glue and glass," 
Like, it's, I, uh, if you know what that's about, that shit, I you do. know what that's from? The only Blood, I, Blood's yeah, Blood Sport. Sport. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The only reason I oh, know that man, is because Dookie done made a fucking meme woo, off of it, and woo. I saw it, and then I had to do my research, because I always thought, I remember the bar, and I was always like, yo, that's an ill ass That got me bar. geeking just hearing that. I was yeah. like, no way he made a Blood Sport reference like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bars. Yeah, bro. Bars. And then to take it from that, he signed with Dre. Dre's hot. Dre's uh, a legend in the game, right? NWA. Everybody knows Dre. Everybody knows Dre from the Chronic to 2001. I'm conflicted on this, but go on. Yeah. Um, in in go going, <laughs> he he made Eight Mile. He signed Fifty Cent, which at the time G Unit was popping. G Unit, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing G Unit on a on a CD rack or seeing their shirts. G Unit's first album was one of my favorite albums of all fucking time. Kept kept going, created controversy. Is one of the most controversial artists of our time, and just recently dropped Kamikaze, hit number one, dissed everybody in the game, and created a movie again created, about battle rapping. Created a again, buzz from dissing everybody. But go on. I I just think he's a household name. He deserves to be up on the goat spot. I I feel like he's. He's lying. he's not washed up. He still has bars. He's he's, bar he's still relevant. He is. He's one of the best lyrical MCs that I know. Yeah, he had that period. Not everybody has a hot song. I could have done without his that. Shit, my pee pee goes to doing his doing unhot doing shit, shit. His turd shit from the critics still beat and defeated ninety six percent of. His category of music, the mainstream, yeah, the mainstream still hip-hop. like probably more than ninety six. Yeah, he's percent. not. Like, he's still, not. I agree. He's not gonna be the underground goat by any means because he's already surpassed that. But as far as being a staple in hip hop, one of the one of the artists that's gonna stick around, you're gonna hear about him when our kids are grown up. Still, they're gonna be talking about the Kamikaze album. They they're will. gonna ask us about him, just like. I feel Kendrick Kendrick is going to be up on that pedestal when our kids are grown. Because the GOAT's going to always change. The GOAT's going to always change. Mm-hmm. So, agree. But as of right now, as I sit at 31 years old, that's my list. That's pretty fucking good. That was only four, though, right? That was five. That was five. Was it, oh, that was five. So yeah. I'll keep it shorter because he sold a lot of the points. We've got a couple of the same on our list. I'm going to start at the bottom. And this is a person who rarely comes up on anybody's GOAT list. Or Rick Bliss. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, so, we've talked about him already. But if you're from here where we are, and he was he was my number one fave of all time, is my number five GOAT, is Tech 9 Just due to the fact of all the things that you talked about. His versatility, his artistry. Like... It doesn't even matter what the song's about. He's going to come in. He's going to fucking kill it lyrically. And it just, it, 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 he's fucking 50-something years old now, like 51, 50. He, he's oh, yeah. pushing 50s. He oh, he's 49. 49. We were yeah. just talking he, about this, he's too. He's in his 40s, yeah. See what I'm saying, though? And it's just, uh, he doesn't get the credit to for who he is, who he's become. He didn't get a royalty check from any of his own music until Ever Ready. All he was getting was his distribution deals, yep. and QV3 was keeping all the money from all of his royalties. And Fuck so he, QV3, by the way. Fuck them busters. He had to go through all of the fucking bullshit to even get known and to become who he is, and he's pretty much the GOAT of the fucking underground market in my eyes. Yeah. I, I'd so have to he, give it. Yeah, I'd give it. He's going to get the number five spot on my list. Oh, you, so you got your shit in place once again, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll jump into my number four. Uh, my number four is uh my okay so after mm, it was probably about 15 14 15 year old and it was just like tupac forever so tupac is my number four i got the tupac cross uh we said this before i got tupac cross from peanut like 17 years ago uh on my on my shoulder like tupac was everything i had my nose pierced like tupac uh when I started going bald, I didn't have my head shaved and have my nose pierced at the same time. But I had my nose pierced at one point and I started going bald when I was a teenager. I was like, I can pull this off because of Tupac type shit. Word. So, I uh, hate Pac. straight up, Tupac was my number four. Uh, number three, Rick's going to fucking hate it. Lil Wayne, 
Uh, mean Duke said this. Lil Wayne is kind of like the godfather in New Age rap. Uh, so here's the thing yeah. that I'm going to give why I'm going to put Lil Wayne on a GOAT list of greatest rappers of all time is because I feel like Lil Wayne has bars. I feel bars, like bars, he, bars. he's got fucking mad skill. I can't do what he does off top of my off top of my head. I can't fucking do it. I can't fucking do no. it. The dude is amazing. So that is longevity, the amount of albums he's dropped, uh, the other amount of uh, the amount of influence that he's had on uh, not only the musical culture but the culture itself as far as being a black dude but also he's a skater he's got the truck fit clothing um all kinds of other bullshit so that's what's gonna put Lil Wayne at number three on my goat list number two on my goat <coughs> list is Jay-Z uh for all the same reasons that Duke said uh his longevity his catalog um I mean the dude put out uh J. Cole Rihanna uh, he's got Rockefeller I, I forgot, started with Def Jam. Now he's the president of Def Jam. Not only that, he fucking signed Nas to his record label. Oh, and they were beefing. That's that's like one besides Tupac and Biggie, Nas and Jay Z. In yeah. my mind, there was no bigger Either. rap beef ever. Look up there was Either. no bigger rap beef than Nas and Jay Z. In my mind, I mean there there was there was you, some good. You ones. had hit him up and you had Ether, like straight up. Ether the, all day. Ether, yeah. All Ether's day. sick. All day. Hit him up's dope, but Ether is way sick. If I so think about, if I think about the last month of my life, I've played Ether, I've bumped Ether a good 30 times. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't listen to Ether in probably a year. Yeah? Yeah, at least. It's, been, a, it's been at least But like I listen to Jay-Z in That's sad. Year. Yeah, I listen, this podcast, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of no. I know you do, dog. List, but I, no, Ether. No, I, I know who Moshe is. I know who Dookie does this, but. Listen to it. Because <laughs> yeah, I listen to it. I've been bumping a lot of locks lately. Well, uh, so, Jada then we can, we can tie that. Jada? We can tie that into my into my goal. Styles. My Styles number one of all fucking time is uh, Eminem. <laughs> He's the only person <laughs> that I can consistently listen to diss tracks of. And his Every newer time. shit, not so much. But his old shit was hella uh, influential and heavy in my life. Uh, the one on Benzino. That I could recite all these diss tracks like bar for bar. The dude just goes in on on uh, the one for Limp Biscuit. That dude from Dilated Peoples that he went on. Uh, with the back cannabis. Uh, no, it's a different guy. I can't I can't remember the guy's name. I was actually just watching a documentary about him, but it's so non relevant at the time. He was rocking with the um, the Alchemist and Dilated Peoples Which and all that. And Alchemist is a fucking yeah. And now Eminem and <laughs> the Alchemist can kick it. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. that's his DJ. That's his. That, that's his DJ fucking, now. That's his main dude. Oh, that's way sick. Yeah, the I, Alchemist. That's I his main dude. Into Eminem, and, and the only reason I know that is because I'm a huge fan of Alchemist, which was Dilated People's yeah. uh, main dude. So yeah, fucking the Alchemist. Like, whew, I sucked the dick oh. real quick. Damn. Yeah, it's like that fighting. Okay, so then, uh, so Eminem ties up my goat list. It really, I, he was. Hella A, influential in my life. His longevity is there. You can't stop his bars, period. It's just rhymes on rhymes on rhymes. So it, it just is it's what all the it dude is. does. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. Like, I do a lot of fucking talking. That dude probably More. just fucking rhymes nonstop. So. Orange in a four door Taurus. In a fucking. Porsche. And it's orange. <laughs> Large ass garage with four cars. <laughs> no, not like that. From Ford. New Jersey. Not like, you want <laughs> the epitome of a wordsmith. Is Eminem, for That's, sure. But no question, fucking about it. Like before, just him doing an interview. I forgot what interview and who it was with, but just him rhyming, uh, uh orange, orange with the mm -hmm. four inch door hinge, orange, like four inch door so hinge. Right, like that really, and that wasn't even the factor, the key factor that epitomized him or labeled him as like a, a fucking lyricist. Like there's many, many greater moments. Like, he's one of the only dudes that could be, like, uh, a lyrical, miracle, his, leaving the motherfuckers hysterical, corny as fuck. But because it was him and how he did it, made him great. Oh, and, and another so thing that, that... I agree, like... In a dominant black genre of music to, like, you could say it with, like, you had, jazz and blues, but you had your white people that broke in to where, I mean, there might have been you had, shade. You had Hold third. On. There might have been shade. And then, uh, but Eminem, no black rapper 
there might be some, but nobody's gonna out rap him if, if you're no. a black rapper throwing shade on Eminem, you're not gonna out rap him. Uh -huh. So all the ones with skill, they're giving Eminem his props. All the ones I know of, you watch all these interviews of all the people we named on our GOATS list, and all of them are all putting Eminem up there. Okay, yeah, so okay. I'm gonna give you that. I'm Kendrick. glad that you added the, the ones that do have skill, give him props, because Locksmith would fucking murder Eminem. Locksmith murders. Eminem. I think I think Immortal Technique would kill Eminem. Oh, yeah. Uh, technique. I, th I think so. Big Pun would I kill him. Uh, big Pun, yeah. already the rugged man. My See what I'm saying? But dude, that's, that's, that's... But they still give... They still get props. Exactly. Yeah. They're not shitting on dude, but you have, you can't. Like, even me not being a fucking fan of Eminem at all. I like his first two albums. For people in Wyoming, Eminem was pivotal because he was one of the first rappers, if not the first rapper for anyone here. I heard fucking Cube and Corn. you know what I mean? But well before I ever heard Eminem. So... My shit yeah. kind of gets. I, I grew was up raised on like G and Bone Thugs and shit. I was like raised 90s. on like Kane, like Golden Era, Snoop Dogg, and before any right. like newer. My I grew up on like G Funk and West Coast, and then Bone Thugs mm -hmm. and shit like that. For sure, I heard a Mac Dre probably fucking six years before I heard uh, Eminem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's the only reason I'm gonna look like the fucking odd duck and not put Eminem in nowhere near my top whatever. Okay, so you know? let's go to yours then. Yeah, who who's your who's your goats, man? Top five would be Pun, and uh, it kind of kills me because I want to put him uh, in the selfish aspect. I want to put him as my number ones because that dude was. You want to talk about a lyricist, and not only, but the dude was like five hundred plus, still rocking a stage, even though he might have had to take like breaks out of his performance, because he did. You know what I mean? He was so fucking fat. He held the Guinness like, for it. But uh, dog, like, spit in the way he did, like. I can't even fucking refurbish some shit right now for you. Like, of course, I'll give it to you. Take a, take a fucking minute break, dog. Take five yeah, minutes. Yeah. I will stay at the show for you. You know what I mean? Right, but the reason he's in a GOAT for me in that category is because he was the first Latino that brought up that conversation of one of the greatest Latinos. You know what I mean? Which the, that's discrimination in my eyes. Like he should have just been labeled one of the fucking greatest. 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 But he was that Latino that made that noise for his people. Right. And that's how I kind of feel about Snow the product now. You know what I mean? It was it's kind of the same. Like She's they the put you in that category, right but they have to add Latino. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I that. That, which is some whack like shit. Like she can't just be the best female rapper. She has to be the best. Well, just like has to be the yeah. best in that category. Yeah. Like that that was pun. When he was kicking it, he guarantee he had more brother homies right. growing up where he grew up in, in the life he was in. You know what I mean? Like, so pun forever will be, if you don't fuck with pun, fuck you. And guarantee if you don't like pun, you don't kick it with me. Guarantee it. You know what I mean? Like, music is such a huge impact. Like, my people, if you don't fuck with them, like, 0%. <laughs> guaranteed 150,000 million fucking whatever percent, you're not, like, around me. Because <laughs> we will have nothing in common. You know what I mean? Like, so pun, most definitely number five. Uh, four would be Tech Nine because there's no greater artist than Tech Nine. So, and he's not even my fucking, I'm not even a huge fan of Tech nowadays. I, I bump strange stations like on Spotify and because I love JLB Hood. I love King ISO. I love fucking, I love 98% of fucking strange. But tech just no you get on stage, you ain't gonna kill tech. Mm -mm, no mm -mm. flow, no. you are not gonna kill tech. No uh, vocabulary, you're not gonna kill tech. So he kills like four and a half, if not five out of five. Like tech is today like the best artist. That's how I But for my top five, like he can't be number one just because I'm not as he's evolved, which I love to see in an artist to a certain extent, like he's He's sold out, in my opinion. You know what I mean? To to in a certain extent, so he can't be my number one. But he's I think definitely that goes with a lot of older, like tech right. bands like this. Yeah. For real, for real. Like I'm, I, I'm not the only one. So he's definitely number four. Number three <sighs> would have to be Tupac. Um, of course, he wasn't the greatest lyricist, which which is like a a main like a. battle as far as like topic wise when it goes to Tupac still in my eyes he was a great fucking lyricist cause he started mm -hmm. off with that poetry shit J. Cole right. style 
almost rigged my mind, motherfucker. Straight up. Like, Tupac was, he literally raised me. When I was going through, I grew up in Douglas, Wyoming, but had a heart of a fucking lion. Not a whole lot of cats in Douglas, Wyoming, in Wyoming, period, had that mind state of, at a young age, knowing that they wanted to go out, already thinking of their death type shit, of just wanting to be that dude. So I already had that mind state, but transitioning and going through the process of life, as we all know, Tupac was there to, to really fundamentally fucking guide me. So I thought gangster was, and that's before I got older and really knew his upbringing and all that. Like my thing was just be gangster, go to prison, fucking get out and reform. You know what I mean? Um, which my life, you know, deviated away from that, which I'm very thankful, but Right, we um, had that conversation. I used to think of that. I went to prison, and I used to think when I was a kid, and I was listening to Tupac, like, elementary, I'd see the penitentiary one day. You know, mm -hmm. I'd never thought, like, when I was a kid, I never thought I'd go to fucking prison, but I did. And Rick was waking up, you know, with that mentality, and he didn't go to prison. So, I mean. Mm -hmm. And my thing was, is just to be that dude, was uh, to be just, uh, no matter what you think of me, even my haters are going to respect me because right. of the shit that I'm doing, whether you like me personally or not, you cannot deny the fact that I'm that dude. You got the juice now. And I will forever fucking be that dude. You know what I mean? Till I'm fucking 60, I'll rob you. If need be. You know what I mean? Like, the the heart. I don't, like, my homies, you don't have to be the toughest, biggest, baddest dude ever because God knows I'm not the toughest, biggest, baddest dude ever. But I'll show you heart. When lose or draw, I'm going to keep fucking going forward. And that's what Tupac was for me. He really is. Like he went forward, he went period. forward, he went fucking forward. So Tupac, right. he he really is my third two and one uh, at the end of the day. Like, really, like, to say fuck everything, like, fuck the list, he would be one through three. But uh, number two, <sighs> tough, fucking tough, would have to be a Coogee rap. Because not just me personally being a street dude, but... There's a lot of cats that are like me. There, there's millions and millions and millions of street dudes. Coogee Rap was the foundation for people to, to publicly be street. You know what I mean? Right. To not have to fucking still do dirt in silence or just, just make moves in silence. It doesn't have to be dirt. Just make, which should still be what you gun for today. You Don't be loud about shit. Just make your moves in silence. Coogee Rap was that. You know what I mean? Like, before street shit was anything, Coogee Rap was out here talking about slinging rock, ripping glocks, uh, all that. Like, Coogee Rap will forever fucking... If you don't fuck with Coogee Rap even this much, I'll fucking punch you. Like, that's how <laughs> at, like how much I feel for Coogee Rap, dog. It's G-Rap. A lot of cats now, even if they ain't talking about that G-shit, they're still throwing in G-shit. Right. You know what I mean? And that's because of rap. That's because of g you know what I mean? If you don't know your knowledge, fucking learn. You know what I mean? Because if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have a lane. Like, for anyone. Eminem, nobody. Like, right. consciously or subconsciously, is because of fucking G-Rap. You know what I mean? So that dude, like, he only charged 3K for a verse, too. I'm still trying to get on that. I don't give a fuck about views. I don't give a fuck about sales. I give a fuck about what the shit mean to me. So, what was he, three? He was only number two? Well, yeah, you still got one. You got those two. You got a oh, so one that was spot. number four, so I only have a one spot you left. one spot yeah. left. Fuck. Oh, I fucked up. Because <laughs> I have two cats right now that are... Oh, that's tough. Oh, that's so tough. So I might as well not keep it to myself. So on one hand, I'm thinking J. Cole. Mm. On the other hand, I'm thinking Benny Paz. Mm. And the reason I'm thinking J. Cole is because he's, he's Tupac reincarnated um just better um he really because fucking as, is. as people is. you evolve you know what i mean um you're not supposed to stay stagnant that uh, you look at the 70s rap scene hip-hop fuck rap hip-hop scene to 2019's you know 2020 scene is fucking completely different and there's still hardcore hip-hop heads right now that are could be considered turds you know what i mean like fucking for real so it, it's real but I have to go with Vinny just because on a personal basis, um, what that dude is, just how that dude's music has been involved in my personal life has been out of this fucking world. You know what I mean? And it, it's not a popularity contest. It's not a fucking show and prove, show and tell contest. Like, you fucking, 
you can hear me and believe me. You can fucking hear me and not believe me. Like, to me, I could give, I couldn't give two shits less, like, if you fucking believe the shit I say. But Vinny Paz was, I would never be able to build up Rick Bliss out of the music scene if it wasn't for Vinny Paz's music scene. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, like, that right. dude fucking not only hit my heart, but gave me, like, chest compressions to myself. Like, oh. Fuck, like, <laughs> let's get it. You know what I mean? Like, Vinny Paz was fucking my go-to dude. Um, shit on repeat. Fucking, there's so many more I want to say, but Vinny Paz is number one. Dope. Um, That's a good fucking. That was a good list all the way through. Yeah. There was a lot solid. of similarities. You know, we could have used more comments. Uh, the only person, shout out to my cousin Vanessa. She commented, Eminem, did you get any other comments? On what? On the uh, goats. Uh, or any of the lists? Nah, shout out to I Vanessa. Congratulations. No, to be a doctor. Congratulations. No, nobody talks to me. Oof. The only people I talk to are you guys in my squad. Hey, nobody, com- nobody commented on my post or nothing. Uh, well, comment on this shit, you guys. So like com- our page, subscribe, all that shit. Throw so uh, comments down in the section. We got lots of shit to talk about. You know we what I mean? We, we got to know us. We're all touchable. We're all... Right here, you could talk to all this comment, Facebook, all that stuff. 230, us, 230 comments, and I'll show my penis. Let us know what you want. Uh, hit us up if you want merch. Let us know what you want to see, who you want to see. We got you. All right. Here we go. Noise from Nowhere. Another one in the books. Yeah, yeah. Noise from Nowhere TV. Shout out to Era 21, Project Flat World. Oaks Blueprint. Yeah. We out. Midwest renegade, hooligan, who is he? Reppin' it heavily, dookie man. Ain't no shade. Take two shots straight to the brain. To the brain. Ice grilled out like I'm hella paid. Whoa. Take your ass up to the helipad. helipad. Toss your ass in to propeller blade. Propeller blade. You know the boys stay too insane. What? Renegade, renegade, renegade. Midwest renegade, hooligan, who is he? Reppin' it heavily, dookie man. Ain't no shade. Take two shots straight to the brain. To the brain. Ice grilled out like I'm hella paid. Whoa. Take your ass up to the helipad. helipad. Toss your ass in to propeller blade. Propeller blade. You know the